Inter have won the Italian Super Cup again as Lautaro Martinez scores the buzzer beater and they win 1-0 in Riyadh against Napoli. Gab, Napoli were unhappy with a second booking for Gio Simeone at the hour mark and the red cards. Yeah, so Napoli thought gave it a good go. Um, it, it, it felt like that because the game was close at the end and you go back and you watch the highlights and you kind of see Inter had a lot of chances, yeah, a lot yeah, of the better. They're just on a team. different level. Yeah, yeah. What was really nice and I've been critical about Riyadh, I, but I'd love to know the answer to this, is at the end, just a celebration. I mean, they celebrate like they'd won something really, really, really meaningful. And also, there were a bunch of Inter fans with signs of the Curva Nord Milano and all this stuff. Yeah, they must have and traveled. Like, did they go there? Did they buy a package tour? Did somebody <laughs> fly them over? I was really curious. Maybe, yeah, that's true. Were those actually act local actors impersonating Italians? <laughs> like at the Qatar World Cup kind of thing? Yeah, <laughs> I was maybe. wondering about that. But uh, no, well done. Yeah. The Super Cup is what it is, but yeah. um, another win for Inter. Udinese have banned five supporters following the racist abuse suffered by Mike Mignon at the weekend and the Italian FA will make them play the next home match behind closed doors. Is that a fair punishment, do you think? So, it's for, well done Udinese again. They took ownership yeah. of them. It could do a little bit less with saying like, we're not a racist city. Nobody's accusing yeah, you of being a racist city. city. Enough, system, enough of saying that. System of that. Right? But you've taken at meaningful action. You've identified the supporters. You were proactive. You didn't wait for, for, for law enforcement to run its course. That part of the investigation is still ongoing. There may be more people banned. This business with making their home next home match play behind closed doors, they're very angry about that. They're saying, why are you punishing all the fans? Yeah. I think part of the reason is videos emerge that some fans continue to racially abuse Mike Mignan after the game restarted. And secondly, Mignan was booed, not racially, but he was booed by big sections of the stadium when they came back on. And, and again, I expect people to understand that, hey, if somebody is racially abused, they have a right to ask the referee to interview without you booing them you know, in a non-racial way, but yeah, without yeah. you booing them. And, and, and I think that's why. And hopefully people will understand that. Former Milan legends Vonimir Boban has resigned from his post as UEFA Director of Football and close advisor to President Alexander Seferin. Gab, he was pretty clear as well on why he did that. Yeah, he, uh, he let out a long, released a long statement where, you know, we've, we've, we've told you before about how Seferin wants to kind of formalize and reinterpret the statutes. The statutes have term limits that you can only serve yeah. two terms. And because Chefferin took over, when he took over in 2017, I think it was, it, he didn't serve a, a, full, a full term first, well, yeah. because he took over after Michel Platini was, uh, was banned. He's saying, oh, no, look, I, I get to stay on until 2031, which, by the way, is what Johnny Infantino is planning at FIFA and others, too. A lot of people, we've told you before, are against this. Yeah, this is not, not good it. governance. Um, and Boban said, look... I'm going to walk away because you're doing this, essentially, right? We, we, we've put these rules in place. It's against the spirit of the, uh, of the laws, uh, at a minimum. It's interesting with Boba because he's a very, very intelligent guy, not just for a footballer, but in general. But he's also somebody who's a strong personality. We saw that. We saw that at Milan. He was working at Milan. He walked out. He worked at FIFA, right, with, uh, with Jeff Wynn's nemesis, Infantino. Yeah. And then he walked out. Um, he's the kind of advisor or helper who he says, hey, Jules, like if I were working for you and I told you, Jules, you screwed up, this sucks, your shoes are ugly, you're making stupid arguments, and, I, and I'm empowered enough that I don't need to kiss your rear end, yeah, yeah. and I can walk away, surely I would think that's more valuable to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And credit to him. It's, it's, I, I, think, I think it is a credit to him, yeah. and, and I hope Chefren reviews his situation, because as I said before, like if you think you're, and look, he's had a difficult run and he's done... I think he did a good job in stopping, stopping the Super League, keeping everything together, clubs on board, whatever. But if you think only you're so necessary to football that only you can do it, it means that you haven't put the governance in place in your organization yeah, that somebody true. can replace you.